In a head-to-head -head matchup, we'll explore the real cost differences between hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and fully electric cars. In order to do this, we drove three Kia Niros, the hybrid, the plug-in hybrid, and the completely electric model, from Twickenham to Birmingham and back while sprinkling in some city driving. Join us as we analyze the data and reveal which one is the most cost-effective. Setting the stage for the battle. Each of the three Neros was immaculately packed for the voyage ahead, and they gleamed in the early light as we set off on our epic expedition. Each car or truck was a triumph of automotive technology, a symbol of freedom and the promise of the wide road. Our planning was nothing short of meticulous. All of the Neros had been painstakingly refueled with premium gasoline, and their batteries had been charged to their fullest capacity. Electrical currents buzzed through their bodies, providing a subtle but potent sense of alertness. We followed a thorough protocol since we wanted our comparison to be as accurate and useful as possible. All of the vehicles followed in a strict convoy formation to provide a level playing field for the drivers. Each Nero's air conditioner and heater were calibrated to maintain a constant 21 degrees Celsius inside the vehicle. The Electric Conundrum with its state-of-the-art electric powertrain and environmentally conscious mentality, the completely electric Nero offered the tempting possibility of doing the whole 280-mile round journey without recharging. As seasoned electric vehicle aficionados, however, we knew that the quoted ranges of electric vehicles are typically overstated. There was no better example of, the proof is in the pudding, and we couldn't wait to see it for ourselves. The fear of running out of battery power followed us everywhere like a black cloud, ready to crush the spirits and derail the electric goals. Would the electric Challenger deliver as promised by the manufacturer? Or would we be left scrambling to locate a charging station in the middle of nowhere? In the interest of research and discovery, we were ready to accept the risk. The electric Nero had to come up with a game plan for the trip back in the face of such ambiguity. This fact alone paved the way for an interesting comparison of the electric Nero's price to that of its internal combustion-powered competitors. There were a lot of unknowns, such as how long it would take to recharge, how much money would be needed to recharge the battery before making the trip back. To what extent can these considerations cancel out the fuel and maintenance cost reductions that electric cars are known for? The plug-in hybrid advantage amp the steady hybrid cruiser. When we shifted our focus to the plug-in hybrid Nero, the scenery around us took on a new tone. In contrast to the fully electric Nero's lofty range expectations, this hybrid model, with its smaller battery, was advertised as offering a meager 38 miles of electric range. On the other hand, the plug-in hybrid's reliable gasoline engine was always ready to take over when the battery ran out of juice. This technological wonder was a hybrid, giving us the best of both worlds and allowing us to go the whole distance with only one fuel stop. The hybrid powertrain of the Honda Civic AHEV consists of a 2.0-liter gas engine and two electric motors. To fuel the second motor or recharge the lithium-ion battery, one of these motors doubles as a generator. This configuration enables the gasoline engine to cooperate with the electric motors decreasing the requirement for the engine to run at full throttle and so increasing fuel economy. Although the EPA estimates that this car would get 56.5 miles to the gallon when using the WLTP standard, the author discovered that it really got between 60 and 80 miles to the gallon in everyday driving conditions, especially when traveling at lower speeds. The results show that plug-in hybrids, although boasting high MPG ratings, seldom live up to their claims in real-world situations, particularly if the battery isn't regularly charged. Compared to the Civic AHEV, this may lead to much worse fuel economy and perhaps greater expenditures. The plug-in hybrid Nero was like a magician, switching back and forth between its electric and gasoline identities with ease. This Nero variant made a compelling case for those looking for versatility and reduced environmental impact without the limitations of a fully electric vehicle, thanks to the promise of electric-only driving for a considerable distance and the security of knowing that the petrol engine would come to the rescue when necessary. On the other hand, our normal hybrid Nero plotted a plan that made our big voyage uneventful. 
This vehicle, with its smaller battery and fuel-efficient heart, was the obvious pick for our journey. We had a pleasant, low-cost journey thanks to the combination of the car's gas engine with intermittent electric assistance, which eliminated the need for special plug-in charging infrastructure or the complexity that comes with completely electric cars. The ordinary hybrid Nero was a constant representation of dependability and practicality in a world where the shift to electric cars was gathering steam. Its ingenious combination of gas-powered and electrical propulsion made it a reliable travel companion, capable of covering great distances with little impact on the environment. As we drove farther into the unknown, it became clear that each Nero model had its own set of advantages and quirks, weaving together a fascinating tapestry of experiences and ideas in our search for the future of vehicular travel. Transition to Urban Terrain The trip went off without a hitch for the typical hybrid Nero. This car's innovative hybrid technology, which combines a gasoline engine with an electric motor, made it the most practical choice for our long journey. The regular hybrid Nero was ideal for us since it promised a cost-effective trip with its smaller but efficient battery and engine engineered for maximum fuel efficiency. The regular hybrid Nero had the comfort of a dependable gasoline engine, unlike its completely electric version, which was plagued by range anxiety. We could rest easy knowing that we wouldn't be left stranded in the middle of nowhere due to a dead battery thanks to the combination of this engine and intermittent electric support. The Narrows were fully immersed in the urban battle zone as we moved from the broad roads of the first day to the crowded streets of London on the second. This change in topography wasn't simply for kicks. It was done on purpose to see how these cars would perform in a whole new setting. Our mission was straightforward, to evaluate how these cars fared in dense urban environments, where conditions and requirements on their drivetrains and technology would be quite different from the comparatively easy highway driving we had been used to up to that point. We were interested in testing the hybrid system's reactivity, the vehicle's ability to negotiate the maze of city streets and the vehicle's efficiency in stop-and-go traffic. The Neros were put through their paces in the thick of London's busy streets, where they had to dodge traffic, turn around tight corners and face a host of other real-world problems. Our race became a fascinating look at how these cars reacted to the ever-changing nature of urban transportation, because to the cityscape. This section of our trip was supposed to provide us a ton of information on how the regular hybrid Nero performs and how well it works in a busy city. The numbers unveiled. With each new stop along the way, we learned more about the mysterious numbers that had ringed our trio of Neros. The conventional hybrid has previously established its worth as a city-friendly fuel-efficient vehicle, nimbly traversing urban streets while using just a fraction of the gasoline required by other vehicles. The interaction between the plug-in hybrid and the totally electric Nero was the true eye-opener. These two rivals, both of which are electrically enhanced, have shown their mettle on the road, but each has its own set of difficulties and surprises. At first glance, the plug-in hybrid Nero seemed to be the obvious victor in fuel efficiency due to its promise of electric-only driving for a limited range. However, when we analyzed the data more closely, we saw an intriguing nuance. It was discovered that the plug-in hybrid's performance was very sensitive to the battery charge level. Its fuel efficiency was superb when the battery was fully charged and producing electric power. However, the plug-in hybrid's dependence on its petrol engine grew increasingly obvious as the miles accumulated and the battery charge decreased, undermining the vehicle's purported fuel efficiency advantage. This discovery increased the level of difficulty in the race by forcing us to carefully monitor the plug-in hybrid's battery charge in order to extend its electric driving range and preserve its fuel efficiency advantage. Using electric power for as long as possible while saving the gas engine's reserve for emergencies became a tricky balancing act. However, the completely electric Nero had to deal with new difficulties. Despite being completely gas independent and producing no exhaust emissions, the lack of a widespread charging network remained a major drawback. We had to carefully arrange our itinerary so that we could stop at charging stations as necessary to maintain the electric Nero's efficiency. The initial range anxiety had become a genuine and ever-present concern, highlighting the fact that the switch to electric cars still face challenges, especially in the areas of infrastructure development 
and range confidence. Were you surprised by these results? Does the cost-effectiveness of different car types influence your choice?